Today on Nerd Out, Min UTXO. It's a scam? Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano and we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're talking about the Min UTXO, what that is, uh, what it is when people talk about it, you hear it thrown around, but nobody ever really uh, digs in and, and explains to you exactly what it is. We're also going to be talking about some of the new scam tokens flowing around the Cardano network and how Min UTXO plays into that. So we're going to be talking about that. So with that, let's dive into it. So Min UTXO, what is it? So the idea is ledger space is a limited resource. You can't just have a ledger grow infinitely. There's only so much memory and hard drive space that pools and relays have to run the Cardano network. So if you were to allow someone to store just a single Lovelace on a UTXO, we could very quickly fill up fill up the ledger and it would overflow everybody's hard drives and RAM and, and everything like that. It would exhaust resources. So on Cardano, there's a, there's a network parameter that is used to determine the minimum amount of ADA that must exist on a UTXO. That prevents ADA from getting split into two small of chunks, thus bloating, bloating the UTXO um, ledger. And so any transaction that you try to make that falls below that min UTXO threshold is rejected. And that's why you can't just send around, you know, a tiny amount of ADA, half an ADA or something like that. It has to be at least so much. Now in the early days of Cardano, min UTXO was hard coded to one. So you couldn't send anything but one ADA. Now it's a calculation based on how much space you're using on the blockchain. And again, this protects the network from UTXO bloat. And the parameter we're talking about today is UTXO cost per byte. The last time this was updated uh, was in SIP 55. Uh, I'll try to have a link to that in the description below. This was a SIP from Jared Cordouan. And um, it changed how the min UTXO was calculated. So this parameter is currently on mainnet set to 4,310 uh, Lovelace. So that is how many Lovelace it costs for every byte of UTXO data that you store. And every output must pay for its own space. It's like kind of a space renting type of thing. You can think of it like that. There's also an overhead constant that is set to 160. And this accounts for, you know, Seaboard data structure stuff. So once we hit Babbage, the UTXO structure changed from an array to a map. We'll, call, we'll talk a little bit more about that later when we talk about the scam tokens. Um, but right now, the calculation for min UTXO is overhead constant plus the UTXO length in Seaboard bytes. So after that UTXO is encoded to Seaboard, how many bytes in length that is. And then we multiply that by the UTXO cost per byte. So let's take a look at this in practice. So if I'm sending some ADA to an address, and let's say it's an ADA-only enterprise address, I'm only sending ADA to it, the minimum amount that I can send is um, 0.8 ADA, 0.85 ADA. Um, this is all in, in Lovelace here. And this, as you see, I've got a map. So zero is the address and one is the amount. Um, so if you're sending a Babbage type of transaction, which is this guy, um, this is the minimum amount that you can send to that address. It's no longer one ADA, it's, it's slightly less at 0.85. And if you're sending it to a staking address, so if the person has one of the, the longer addresses, this is what you'd normally see in your wallet. Again, that uses more space because it's a longer address. You're going to pay a little bit more ADA to send that. So the minimum amount of ADA you can send to this type of, of address is 0.97. And again, these numbers were set so that it would be very close to that one ADA so that any dApps or applications that had in the past hard-coded it to one ADA, they would still continue to work. We didn't want this number to come out above one ADA and break those, those apps. 
And so this one, the UTXO, is 67 bytes long. And now let's take a look at uh, a scam token I was sent recently. This is the Noom scam token. And these scam tokens, what they do is they, they go into your wallet. They say, hey, come claim this free airdrop or something. Go to this website. The website is a scam. They'll ask you to sign a transaction, and they will drain everything out of your wallet. It's a really dumb scam. Don't fall for it. Um, We'll explain a little bit more about that later. But with a scam token, they're required to send you uh, 1.16 ADA. And you might say, but wait, Andrew, when I got sent these scam tokens, they only sent 1.159 ADA with it. So let's take a look at that. And what they're doing is they're actually creating a transaction from a previous era. The previous era, uh, where this structure was different is like a Mary transaction. And in Mary, we had no concept of, you know, we didn't need anything other than uh, native assets. So we use the map today to store additional things on the UTXO, like inline datum values or datum hashes. Uh, but back in Mary, you didn't need that. So everything was based on arrays. Arrays use ever so slightly less data and so the calculation comes out to be a little bit cheaper. Instead of 111 bytes, they can get the UTXO down to 109 bytes per output. And they're doing that because they want to max or minimize the amount of ADA they spend to send out these scam tokens. Yes, on Cardano, if you send a scam token, it will cost you money as a scammer. So let's talk a little bit about some of the biggest UTXOs on Cardano, and that is when you're doing reference scripts with Plutus V2. So Plutus V2 allows you to pack the whole Plutus script onto a UTXO, and then instead of spamming the chain over and over with that in Plutus V1, you just put it on the chain once, and then you reference that anytime you do a transaction. So that ch saves a, a ton of blockchain space or it saves a ton of transaction space but they can cost a lot to put on chain some of the noom ones cost i think between 30 and 60 ada to put on the chain but again that's a one-time cost and they're just renting the space because it's a nice big plutus script but then it makes your other transactions nice and tight and small and so they can be reused many times now, in Plutus V1, they don't take up a lot of UTXO space because all they had was the datum hash on the UTXO, but they do take up a ton of block space because the actual script had to be stuck in the transaction every time it was run. And so right now, any, anybody that's using Plutus V1 is causing chain bloat. Uh, there's currently a proposal, a new SIP proposal, to bring reference scripts back to Plutus V1. And so we want to thank uh, Pi Lanningham for bringing that to everybody's attention. You can find that on the SIP GitHub if you want to take a look at that. It isn't going to take a lot of work, and it will probably get in there for the Conway hard fork. So that's uh, a great thing. It doesn't bring down the ledger bloat space, but it does bring down the block space. So we're going to get a big bonus from that. So some final thoughts. Let's talk about these scams. Beware of scams. These tokens will just show up randomly in your wallet. Uh, look at your wallet. Always see what you are signing. Always. Um, I want to say always, always, always many times. So whenever you're in your wallet and you're asked to sign a transaction, there should be a summary screen that shows you the result of this transaction. That's the benefit of Cardano and UTXO blockchains is they're deterministic. You can always see what the result is going to be before you submit the transaction. So if you did happen to get to this website and they tricked you into thinking you're getting an airdrop when you're not and you click on, you know, okay, yep, I'm ready to sign the transaction. You'll see a summary screen. If your wallet doesn't do this, find another wallet. You'll see a summary screen that will explain to you, oh, minus all of my ADA, minus all of my cool tokens. Um, don't sign that transaction. If you do want those scam tokens out of your wallet so you don't have to think about them, you can send them to the burn.it ADA handle. 
Um, otherwise, you can thank the scammer, let them sit in your wallet. They don't hurt anything. Tokens can't hurt you on Cardano because they're not smart contracts. Um, and thank the scammer for the extra staking rewards that they gave you because they had to send you ADA because of menu TXL. So these scams will stop when people stop falling for them. If this happens, the scammer is actually losing money. So Cardano community, let's make this scammer lose money by not falling for their stupid scams. And all this to say, Cardano was built right from the beginning. They thought about these kind of things. They thought about space rent. Cardano was built right. And with that, nerd out.